St. Patrick's Day is almost here, so we're going to talk Irish. William Irish and Cornell Woolrich, the great writer of noir despair. Hi, I'm Gary Lovisi, and this time we're going to take a look at just uh, some of the works, some of the paperbacks, and a series of books by uh, William Irish, who also wrote as, I mean, uh, Cornell Woolrich, who also wrote as William Irish, and also George Hopley. And uh, he was born in 1903. He died in 1968. He was a tormented recluse. And uh, I'm going to give a little bit more about uh, his life. That um, when he he started writing, he was uh, wrote a couple of books in the 20s that were in the F. Scott Fitzgerald mold. mold. And uh, he did very well with those books. And uh, he actually went to Hollywood as a script, as a script writer, but then that f he failed. And um, then he, uh, after a while, started writing uh, for the pulps in the 30s and 40s. Um, very grim, dark, uh, suspense, noir, thrillers, uh, stories of uh, despair, lost love, terror, and... Uh, just hopelessness. And um, unfortunately, that was a lot of the way his life was in real life. Um, some of the information I have is from the uh, introduction by Francis Nivens Jr., which is in the Ballantine set of uh, 12 uh, Woolrich Irish uh, reprints that they came out with in the uh, 80s, and 80s and 90s. And uh, they had great Lawrence Swinger cover art. And I'm going to show those to you. And um, we're going to take a look at the books, some of the books now. And then we're, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Woolrich and his life. So here's some of the books. Uh, this is the 12 book set by Ballantine Books. And uh, it came out in the, er the, the early to middle 80s. I Married a Dead Man. Very uh, good titles. Uh, Lawrence Swinger did all the cover art on these books. Night Has a Thousand Eyes, originally written as George Hopley. Night Has a Thousand Eyes, talk about paranoia and, you know, uh, just people watching. Um, and, of course, I Married a Dead Man. Um, next one is a Rendezvous in Black, psychological suspense novel. The man standing in a dark cemetery. The covers really evoke the mood that these stories and novels had in Woolrich's, um, Woolrich's stories and also in Woolrich's life. <clears throat> the Black Angel. Uh, Schwinger's art is, uh, is dark, uh, dark in... in uh, you know, not not being bright, uh, it kind of, uh, but it's 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 he's trying to recreate that noir sensibility that he does so well for uh, Woolrich's stories. Next one is the is the Black Path of Fear. You see a shadow coming up the steps. It's almost Lovecraftian, or in a, in a dark, grim way. Um, the next one is the Black Curtain, and you see that black is a title, a word that appears in a lot of his title, The Black Path of Fear, The Black Angel, The Black Curtain, Rendezvous in Black. It's all noir, it's all, it's all uh, just uh, despair and, 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 and terror and lost love and, and, and very sad, you know, things that went on with his life that he put into these stories later on. Uh, the next one is Rear Window which was, of course, made into the Alfred Hitchcock movie with Jimmy Stewart. And um, some of the other movies were made, I mean, some of the other books were made into movies also. So um, he, he was actually a uh, very successful writer. He um, sold a lot of his books. Uh, he had a lot of books. He sold them. They were reprinted over and over again. They were popular. And some of them were made into movies. Waltz into Darkness is the next one. Again, Lawrence Swinger. Art. 
black alibi. A woman all alone in kind of like a Casbah setting. Deadline at Dawn. A lot of these were written, some of them is William Irish. There's a, a couple trying to escape. And um, William Irish was his more, a little more hard-boiled side where Woolrich uh, used the stories under his own name were more noir, more suspense, terror, horror, almost. <clears throat> um, the, Bri the Bride Wore Black is another one. Great cover there. And the last one of the uh, Valentine uh, series that was written is by William Irish is Phantom Lady. And that's a famous, famous uh, book that was made into a movie. Uh, a guy, um, a guy is accused of murder and he's, um, he is a woman that can, uh, with, a, with a big hat, that he remembers the hat, and uh, she's the only person that could um, could uh, give him an alibi and save his life. But he uh, can't find her, and he's going crazy looking for this phantom lady. And uh, it's an unbelievable story. All of these are really good. They're great reads. It's, it's uh, Woolrich was an interesting fellow. Um, just a few other books. We're gonna move these up. In, uh, in the 1980s, later in the 80s, uh, Carolyn Graff came out with a couple of uh, collections of Woolrich stories from the Pulps, Vampire's Honeymoon and Blind Date with Death. Some of the other Woolrich stories and, and, and books uh, was The Doomstone, an Avon book, uh, T408. There was uh, Beyond the Night, Avon T354 from 1959. This is Six Tales of Terror and Horror. Number Pyramid Book uh, G374 is uh, Death is My Dancing Partner with the Ed Schultz cover. All the titles are, I mean, Beyond the Night, Death is My Dancing Partner, The Doomstone. They're all grim, macabre, uh, just basically evoking the despair of, uh, that, that Woolrich felt. Um, later on, uh, in the, uh, I believe in the 90s, uh, Penguin, uh, American Penguin Crime did a few um, reprints. Um, this one, I Married a Dead Man, has a uh, blurb by Ray Bradbury. It says, Cornell Woolrich deserves to be discovered and rediscovered by each generation. I Married a Dead Man. And um, they, uh, Penguin also did uh, Rear Window and other stories. And um, Paperback Library published Night Has a Thousand Eyes, an earlier printing from 1967 uh, that he originally wrote as George Hopley. Very kind of uh, gothic story, gothic cover art on that one. And the last one is uh, from the 1990s, I believe, and it's Into the Night. This was a uh, uh, a uh, unfinished novel by Woolrich that uh, uh, was left upon his death, and it was finished by uh, mystery author Lawrence Block. And um, the thing with Woolrich was he was a successful writer. He, at the time, he, he, he died in 1968. At the time of his death, he was worth over $850,000. But the problem was is that he was a really a tormented recluse who um, whose stories were... Uh, basically uh, mirrored his own life. After his, uh, he had a marriage early on and he had uh, some su uh, very limited success in Hollywood. And um, at, that, at that point, everything kind of fell apart and he was, went, began, ended up living with his mother in hotels in Manhattan. Um, uh, for, for 20 so years, he became a, a, a recluse 
He was kind of tormented. His life had become a mess. And he was just writing. He was just writing. He was just writing. Uh, just excuse that doorbell. He was writing. Uh, continue writing stories and novels and selling them. But he was getting no joy out of anything that he was doing. Um, his mother passed away in 1957. And at that point, it just kind of destroyed his life. He kind of cracked up. And um, by that time, he had uh, gotten uh, more ill. And uh, 10 years, he was like just living by himself in various hotels in Manhattan. Um, uh, very tormented recluse. He, um, he lived all alone. He was an alcoholic. Uh, he was a homosexual and ha had self-contempt because of that. He had diabetes and he had a, a leg amputated because uh, the diabetes had gone gangrene in the leg. Now, some of this material is by um, uh, Francis Nivens uh, that I have uh, been able to uh, use from the introduction in his uh, books for Ballantyne. Uh, he's a uh, Woolrich scholar and um, biographer, and he terms Woolrich as probably the fourth best noir crime American writer that uh, has ever been. He puts the other three above him as Hammett, Chandler, and uh, O. Stanley Gardner, and he says that Woolrich is, is the fourth best, which is pretty high, um, pretty high when you think about all the other people that, uh, that aren't in that, that list of four. So Nivens really uh, accurately uh, depicts the, uh, the horror that was Woolrich's life and the excellent uh, stories and novels that he wrote and uh, his, his, uh, his life was tormented. Um, the sad thing is that when he, when he passed away in 1968, um, I was told by Matt Gavaloni, the uh, also crime author who was uh, uh, in the Mystery Writers of America, uh, that nobody came to his funeral. And even though he was so successful and he was so well known, and he was a member of Mystery Writers of America, and Mike, Mike Avalone was the only person that attended his funeral. And he said that there was, told me that there was no, nobody there, just, um, just the people that uh, were burying him. It was very, very sad. He was devoted to his mother and uh, it was a unhealthy relationship that went on for many, many years. And uh, he tried to break away when he had some fame uh, when he was younger. When he wrote the books in the Fitzgerald, he wrote two books, uh, one of them in the F. Scott Fitzgerald uh, style, which uh, became popular, and that's what got him the entree into uh, writing for Hollywood, and also he ended up uh, having uh, getting married, but the marriage didn't last long, and the Hollywood um, uh, script writing did not last long. It was a failure. Both of them were failures, and he kind of withdrew, and he moved into hotels with his mother in Manhattan and just lived in hotels all the time. I don't know, there was, there was, uh, I was trying to find the information on this. I'm not, I don't know if it was uh, Woolrich or Goodis, David Goodis. I think it was Woolrich, but uh, I don't remember where I read it or heard it, um, that he dedicated uh, a lot of his books to um, just hotel rooms, just to a hotel room, uh, vacant hotel rooms in hotels that he that he stayed at or to a typewriter uh, very kind of sad almost the the, the ultimate uh, yeah, degradation in a kind of way the ultimate despair of a writer who's a, a low self-loathing homosexual he was an alcoholic he had diabetes he was amp had his leg amputated he was in a uh, wheelchair and uh, Niven says that at the end, he didn't, uh, they, they made a movie from one of his books and he never even got to see it, even though it opened uh, a little bit before he passed away. And they, the staff at the uh, hotel used to take him out into, in a wheelchair, 
to look just look out the window and stare at people going by in Manhattan. And um, he was 89 pounds or something like that. Uh, he had he was desiccated. He was wasting away, and uh, he was almost uh, uh, a haunted version of uh, the actual character of that that Stewart. Uh, Jimmy Stewart played in Rear Window when he was in the wheelchair looking out the window at life passing by. Well, this almost, this happened, kind of happened to Woolrich, and then he, he passed away. So it's, it's, it's a very sad life, but he left behind some unbelievable classic noir horror crime stories that, uh, stories you'll never forget. He was a, a magnificent writer. He, uh, he did uh, just terrific work, a very talented person who uh, succeeded uh, under, under, you know, at least succeeded financially and, and, and um, published, publishing wise with books uh, in spite of all the things that he had against going against him. And the, the thing was, is, it was his relationship with his mother was, was a sick not healthy relationship and that's what I think uh, and that's what Niven said really kind of uh, you know caused him to uh, withdraw become this tormented recluse and then uh, you know just have no happiness in life where where um, the only thing that he did have was an understanding of all of that despair and he put that into his stories so it's a, it's a bittersweet uh, story about a tormented, very talented man, uh, and uh, a man who, uh, who, when he passed away, there was, there was uh, nobody there to wish him goodbye or anything except uh, fellow writer Mike Avalon. And um, again, he left us these great stories that we're going to treasure forever, and uh, the terrific if you haven't read any of them, you've got to read them. You're going to love them. They're, uh, they're, they're tough. They're unrelenting. But they're uh, beautiful noir stories. They're just really gripping and uh, challenging. And it's authentic noir because he lived the life. And uh, he knew what he was writing about. So pick up a Woolrich story. Pick up a William Irish story. Uh, he wrote... As William Irish, some of his toughest, uh, toughest uh, books, and uh, so that's the, that's the, uh, those are my favorites of the, of the Irish books. So um, get 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 a get a chance to, to pick up some of these, and, and if you have them, dig them out from wherever they're hidden and read them because you're going to love them. And uh, just wanted to. Clue you on to some of the, the these later William Irish books. Um, they're really nice. The Lawrence Swinger covers are really per terrific. And um, hope you enjoyed this look at uh, William Irish and Cornell Woolrich and uh, some of his uh, books. And I hope you uh, like it and give us a thumbs up. Thanks for looking, and we'll see you next time.